you're watching Rise News. Now let's cross on right now to Paris, where the Nigerian International Partnership Forum is taking place. And we have the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Mohamed Buhari, giving his address. The Nigeria International Partnership Forum. I thank the organizers for this well-intentioned initiative. I also thank the Nigerian and French diplomatic and business communities for their sustained faith in Nigeria, confidence in our government, and significant contributions to our economic prospects. France, Nigeria, bilateral relations are currently at their best. Our administration has capitalized on the strong political and economic ties between both countries to deepen trade relations, retaining Nigeria as France's biggest trading partner in sub-Saharan Africa. I believe that the robust bilateral engagement fits into the French plan to reset and rebalance its foreign policy from work in Africa for sustainable and mutually beneficial partnership. Most recently in Glasgow and earlier in Riyadh, I stress the importance of international cooperation in addressing the diverse challenges triggered by a COVID-19 pandemic. If anything ever tested multilateralism and signals the poor state of international cooperation, it was the absence of a viable global plan for tackling the pandemic. However, with the emergence and efficacy of vaccines, the world anticipates a brighter future. For us in Nigeria, lessons drawn from the pandemic prompted us to redouble our efforts to mitigate its social economic effects. Despite prevailing uncertainties, our equitable and sustainable reform initiatives resulted in substantial economic gains and steady recovery. I can assure you that our administration is on the right path to achieving multi-sectoral progress. We have revitalize the economy by increasing investments in capacity building, health, infrastructure, women's empowerment, climate change, and food security. Today, these actions are yielding self-employment, expanding our human resource pool, and strengthening national sustainable development. Recognizing the importance of security to our nation's risk profile, we reassessed and updated our national security strategy in 2019. The implementation of this multi-sectoral strategy has contributed to the progress we have made in fighting insurgents and terrorists in northeast of the country Working closely with international partners, we are firmly addressing the root causes of crimes and taking measures to prevent and counter violent extremism. As I said on the fifth edition of the Future Investment Initiative Summit in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, investing in humanity is investing in our collective survival. With this in mind, we have incorporated the public-private partnership model into our economic recovery plan to attract private sector participation in the financing and operations of critical economic and social infrastructure. This measure is already helping to mitigate COVID-19 triggered capital flight and decline in grant and development financing. Also, at the just concluded COP26 in Glasgow, I stressed the link between modern infrastructure 
and overall economic development of a nation. Hence, the massive infrastructure expansion program we have been executing in various sectors since the beginning of this administration. $1.5 trillion is a cumulative amount estimated to be spent within a period of 10 years from 2015. So far, we have made significant investment in railways, seaports, roads, renewable energy, housing, and many other attractive to prospective investors. Institutions such as the Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority and the recently created Infrastructure Corporation of Nigeria run as independent and world-class institutions to support and facilitate investment in the country. We have not only provided several opportunities for investment in the mining sector, but we have also simplified the licensing processes. Extensive investments in transportation of raw materials, equipment, and other mining elements by road and by rail have also been made. To keep the progress in the digital economy, the fastest growing sector in Nigeria in both 2020 and 2021 on track, we recently approved the national policy on fifth generation network. Our ultimate goal is to leverage ICT platforms to spur further investments and create jobs while diversifying support to other emerging sectors. Already, several foreign investors are taking advantage of our recent ranking as the leading startup ecosystem in Africa. Over a week ago, I launched the eNara, the electronic version of our national currency. One fully operationalized, this innovation will increase participation in fintech within Nigeria, increase efficiency in the banking sector, and boost our capacity to combat illicit flow of funds. In the oil and gas sector, I recently signed the Petroleum Industry Act. The legislation, which is expected to serve as a liberalizing force in the industry, introduce incentives such as tax holidays, zero interest loans, and easy repatriation of profits. Our plan is to increase liquefied natural gas exports and expand our domestic market. Partnerships in textile and leather processing, tourism, and health sectors are also areas we can explore. In the agricultural sector, through our anchor borrowers program, we provided loans and technical support to smallholder farmers leading to the expansion in the number of rice mills in Nigeria from 10 in 2014 to 40 today. The country has also increased the number of active fertilizer blending plants to more than 46 from fewer than five in 2014. Similarly, we have set aside several million hectares of available arable land for agriculture and have embarked on the creation of special agriculture processing zone across the country. I am proud to reiterate our resolve to reduce and ultimately eliminate obstacles to access and retention of foreign direct investment. Our investment-friendly policies are backed by the rule of law, practical security policies, and a resilient population. Let me finally stress that Nigeria is open for partnership and cooperation. 
I invite the French business community to take advantage of the vast investment opportunities in Africa's largest economy. As our development partners rest assured that we will stand together with you throughout our partnership journey to guarantee our mutual interest. Once again, I sincerely appreciate the time taken by our friends and partners to be here today and the confidence reposed in Nigeria as the gateway for investments in Africa. I wish you both sides of the partnership very fruitful engagements. Thank you very much. And that was the president of Nigeria, President Muhammadu Buhari, on a speech at the Nigerian International Partnership Forum, live in Paris, speaking about a lot of things, of course, all of it to promote partnership and investments between foreigns, uh, foreign uh, com multinationals, especially uh, the French. Yeah, and also, also stressing the need for this partnership to come to fruition thanks to, no thanks to the COVID, because uh, the, th the theme of this particular conference is beyond the pandemic. So right. certainly he's been speaking about how the pandemic has ravaged the economy, and more importantly, how we need to look beyond that and why direct partnership needs to come direct investment needs to come to Nigeria to ensure that we begin to mitigate against some of the loopholes that the pandemic actually created. And the president was actually just, you know, a little bit beating our chest and saying all the good things that Nigeria has been working on mm -hmm. in order to um, make things more economically sound. He was talking about the PIA bill and its passage and also um, just saying that Nigeria is open to partnerships pretty much um, yes. for uh, trade relations, to deepen those trade relations with France and our European friends. Um, oh. Right about now, we are going to bring in a RISE correspondent, Femi Akinsoya. She's joining us live from Paris for more on President Buhari's trip to the French capital. Hi, Femi, good afternoon. And um, yes, let's get right into it. What's happening so far? at the Nigerian International Partnership Forum. Could you give us some behind the scenes details? Thank you, Hawa and Aaron. Well, as you've just heard, President Mamadou Bari did address the crowd. His, his participation and his presence was hotly anticipated. He, he did arrive uh, a little later than was originally expected, but he did arrive and he just delivered the keynote speech in which he discussed the, the strategic partnership between Nigeria and France, how important it is to foster relationships. And he did, in fact, call on not only French investors, but indeed international investors to take advantage of the vast opportunities there are here uh, helping uh, Nigeria to continue to meet, it, meet its financial and economic potential. Throughout the proceedings here so far today, Nigeria has consistently been referred to as the giant of Africa. And you can un it's very easy to understand why. There's a huge uh, private sector presence here, but also the, president of the presence of the Nigerian president and many delegates, all of them gathered here together in Paris to foster new relationships, understand how how Nigeria can continue to foster a good relationship with France and beyond. France does have a very significant relationship with the United with Nigeria uh, as it stands now, as it pertains to uh, natural resources, gas. Nigeria is France's uh, number one partner when it comes to gas and when it comes to economic development too. France continues to position itself uh, into the purview of Nigeria so that they can continue to foster good relationships and develop on growth. The, the theme of this partnership forum or the sideline theme is definitely moving beyond the pandemic and we can understand that in the immediate aftermath of the very early onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, it had huge ramifications for Nigeria's economic profile, but that is changing for the better. And that's what the president wants investors here and internationally to be able to gauge and take advantage of. All right, Adifemi, what more can we expect from this Nigerian International Partnership Forum moving forward? 
Thank you, Aaron. Well, coming up just now, we will have another plenary session. It is uh, ultimate, what they are, panel discussions. The first one focused on security, and that's where you had Issa Pantami talk about the digital side of cyber warfare, or, of online fraud, and how important it is in modern day Nigeria, and indeed this world, to make sure that you are able to arm yourself with the correct protocols. He said every four seconds, new malware is developed, so that underscores just how important the digital economy is and protecting Nigeria's you know, digital borders as much as possible. So in addition to talking about the digital side of things, there was obviously the very hard truth of Nigeria's current insecurity issues and whether or not that plays a role in the lack of in the lack of, uh, of investment happening in Nigeria. But again, with the, with the coming together of these dignitaries, the private sector, members of the government, we're also represented, Nigeria is also represented here by the Afri uh, by Afrexin Bank. We're able to move beyond or foster ways that we can move beyond the security issues. What's happening next, though, very interestingly, is a panel discussion on the economy. And we're expecting the Nigerian Minister for Finance, Zainab Ahmed, to participate. But also, interesting, interestingly enough, we're also expecting Godwin Emefiele, that is, of course, the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, to be a part of that panel discussion and talk about how Nigeria, again, continues to position itself. We, we haven't been able to see Zainab Ahmed just yet, but we do know that the Central Bank governor, Godwin Emefiele, is currently on ground and will participate in the uh, panel discussion happening just now. You can imagine that there, in the aftermath of the president uh, coming off stage, there's been a huge presence of people here. Just behind me here, we do have Abdul Rabiou Samad. So I wonder, so I wonder if we can ask you a few questions live on air. This is Arise News. Arise. Yes, we were just we heard your speech earlier today talking about the significance of Nigeria and France fostering a relationship. Tell us why it was important for you to be here today. Well, it's so it's so very important. I think this is you know a very very important forum. You know the fact that as you can see, Mr. President is here. You know highly represented Nigeria, and also you know the French, as I said you know earlier, the relationship at ebbed before, but now it's being reset, you know, because of the efforts of, you know, Mr. President and also, of course, the French President, we are seeing a resurgence, you know, in this relationship. So we are very, very excited. We are very happy. I chair the France-Nigeria Business Council. We have some of the biggest companies, both in France and in Nigeria, as members of the council. We are trying to see how we can promote, you know, more trade and businesses between Nigeria and France. And it is, you know, yielding quite a lot of results, you know, and I want to thank Mr. President really for making time, you know, to come and of course, you know, the Minister also of Foreign Affairs, you know, for organizing this forum. I think it's a welcome development. There are so many things we can do together between the French, you know, and the Nigerian, biz you know, business communities. And I look, you know, forward to a very exciting, you know, sessions going forward. I heard the representative from Cameroon talk about uh, Nigeria's issues with ease of doing business. I'm sure that that's something that you're also very interested in, in, in solving. What, what can we expect from you in terms of how those problems can be streamlined? Exactly. Well, for us, you know, especially as the chair of the France-Nigeria Business Council, we are here to support not only members of, you know, the, uh, uh, the, the council, but also anybody that wants to do business in Nigeria. As the minister said, you know, he's made it very, very clear you know, there have been quite a lot of things that have been done, you know, to ease, to make doing business in Nigeria very easy. You know, as you had him, it is easy for you, you know, you can register any company from anywhere in the world. You know, you can, you know, do quite a lot of things, you know, by just sitting in your, you know, uh, the comfort of your home. So I believe, you know, we're making quite a lot of progress. You know, it is uh, making, you know, it's becoming very, very easy. And I believe, as we all know, Nigeria is the next frontier. Is the biggest economy in Africa. We have over 200 million people. The opportunities are there. There's nothing that we don't have in Nigeria. We have the mineral resources, we have the people, we have the land, we have the water. You know, agriculture is a big, big thing, you know, in Nigeria. If, you know, people decide to go into that, mining, you know, manufacturing, you know, agriculture especially. So there are so many opportunities. There are so many things, you know, people can do in Nigeria. We just need to come and see how we can harness these resources. As I was saying earlier, if you look at what is going on, what is happening today, 
you know, I'm in the mining business, for example, in the cement business. What we are doing today in Nigeria, ordinarily you'd not be able to import what we are producing in Nigeria simply because of the logis because of issues with logistics. Nigeria is sitting on billions of tons of different types of resources. Look at limestone, look at iron ore, oil and gas, everything we have in Nigeria. It's just for us to get the right partners to come and you know, work together to be able to harness all these resources and would be able to not only, you know, uh, cater for what we need in Nigeria, but also to cater for whatever anybody needs within the African continent. So I believe and I know that Nigeria is the, the best opportunity that we have in Africa. So I really look forward, you know, to having the right partners to come and partner with us in Nigeria to be able to harness these resources that we have to be able to, you know, do so much more. So I thank you so much for that. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. For that was, of course, Abdul Samad Rabiu, who is the chairman and founder of Boa Group. And you heard him talk about his personal uh, uh, affiliations and business affiliations to making sure that the Nigeria-France relationship does foster and does grow in the right direction for the betterment of the country. And of course, Nigerians themselves, Hawa and Aaron. Stuff, Femi, excellent stuff. That is Ade Femi. Akin Sonia reporting live from Paris at the Nigerian International Partnership Forum. We will catch up with you later. Thank you. You're watching News Day. Now let's cross back to Paris, where the CBN governor, Godwin M. Mefele, is speaking at the Nigerian International Partnership Forum. He had been on a positive growth trajectory. And uh, I also said I'll be providing some context to this. Um, indeed, Nigeria uh, witnessed, before the pandemic setting, 12 consecutive quarters of positive growth following the 2016 and 17 to 17 recession that we faced, along with significant foreign capital inflows due to improved fundamentals of the Nigerian economy. Indeed, pre-COVID, we saw that the macroeconomic environment, the Nigeria's macroeconomic variables, were indeed rising, and in, in, in worst case, we saw some kind of stability. For instance, during the first quarter of 2018, we saw GDP at 1.95%, and this rose to as high as 2.55% uh, during the fourth quarter of 2019. We saw headline inflation by January of 2017 was almost about 18.7%. And by the end of 2019, last quarter of 2019, inflation had moderated to 11.98%. During this same period, and speaking specifically during the second quarter of 2018, we saw Nigeria's reserve peak at almost 48, trending towards $50 billion uh, during this period of the pre-COVID era. Indeed, during this same period, immediately, immediately um, after the recession of 2016-17, we launched the investors and exporters window and at its highest point, we saw daily volumes on the investors and exporters windows picking at as high as 250 to $300 million in daily turnover. Unfortunately, in 2020, January 2020, the pandemic set in. COVID set in with a health crisis in At the same time, after notwithstanding the fact that we're still combating the incidence of COVID-19 and the pandemic, the global economy also saw witness some crisis with some drop, significant drop in commodity prices, and for Nigeria in this case particularly, crude oil. Precisely sometime around, speaking specifically, sometime around April 2020, we saw crude price dropping to as low as, in some cases, $20 a barrel. 
it got to a point where the cost of production was became even higher than the price of the crude per barrel. Confronted by this challenge, and of course, again, um, we, we started to see inflation also picking up. During the same period of the pandemic, we saw daily turnovers on the investors and exporters window plummet to, in some cases, as low as $50 million per day. Confronted by this challenge, the Nigerian government, and speaking specifically about the monetary and fiscal authorities, took certain specific steps to ensure that the Nigerian people who are both directly and indirectly impa impacted by the lockdowns and the COVID-19, that, that the impact is somewhat mitigated or ameliorated. We, in the, from the monetary policy side, we took a few short and medium term actions. And like we know, the immediate effects of the COVID-19 in Nigeria was felt through loss of means of livelihood for many Nigerians and households during the lockdown. Food prices were increasing and there was rationing of available food in the markets which, had, which, which led to artificial food scarcity in, in, some of our, in some of our states. We took a few actions. First of all, we felt that because there was lockdown, businesses that were affected, who were, for instance, on daily wages, on, on some kind of wages, that were badly directly impacted, that those of them who had loans in their banks, that their loans be restructured. We also give opportunity to say that those loans, particularly loans that are by way of central bank interventions, that the interest rate on those loans come down from five to nine. I mean, from nine to five. And this had continued even till now because we decided to grant a further extension and we hope that by um, hoping that um, the lockdowns, now that the lockdowns have been lifted, economic activities have uh, picked up quite tremendously, uh, that by April of 2022, the interest rate on those interventions will move up from five to the original level of 9%. Aside from that, we felt that, because as a result of the pandemic as well, the global economy was, was hit very badly. Many of the economies, both developed and developing economies, were hit by the pandemic. Most of the economies, indeed, during the second quarter of 2020, went into recession. But fortunately for Nigeria, during the first quarter of 2020, we had a pleasant surprise because our GDP then still remained positive at 1.87% when most other economies saw contraction in their growth from to some, some of them to as low as even 30-40%. Most of those economies that were impacted by the negative output during the first quarter of 2020, um, during the second quarter went into recession because at that time they had suffered two consecutive contractions in output. However, for Nigeria, we, we, we saw our first contraction in output during the second quarter of 2020 to minus 6.1. Second qu uh, third quarter, output, I will use the word improved, even though still on contraction level, from minus 6.1 during the second quarter to 3.61% during the third quarter of 2020. Of course, during the fourth quarter, we also saw some further improvements in output from minus 3.6% to uh, just money to, I say, through a hair's breadth, escaped the contraction at 0 0.1. First quarter of 2021, we moved further up in output to 0 0.55. And of course, uh, during the third quarter of 2020, we saw a, a, we saw a, a greater improvement in output to 5.01%, due largely to not only uh, base effects, but also by some of the actions that had been taken by the monetary and fiscal authorities. And some of those actions, just to go into them very briefly, 
We felt that those who were impacted by the, by, by the pandemic, that there was a need to create some kind of targeted credit facilities for households and very small, micro small businesses in Nigeria. Initially, we set out to provide about 100 billion naira, but as I speak, almost close to about a million people have benefited from that targeted credit facility to our households, almost to the tune of over 300 billion naira. We also uh, set up the, our health uh, intervention funds, which was a facility that was meant to support and rebuild some of our pharmaceutical industries as well as some of our health centers. We provided about 100 billion intervention, and to date, we are, that money has been, uh, has been exhausted. We have done over, slightly over 100 billion for our health and pharmaceutical uh, institutions in Nigeria, just to re reposition them again so they can come alive and be able to provide health support for our people. We did also provide a one trillion naira uh, facility for companies that are in our agricultural sector as well as our manufacturing companies because we felt that it was important to, to do everything possible to boost again manufacturing output through which we also felt that it would help in, in boosting the economic activity in the country. So in short, a combination of some of these interventions from where we're boosting intervention to households, to, tag, to small, small and medium enterprises, all went ahead in boosting consumption and investment expenditure in Nigeria. And if you know what it is, uh, what are the factors that really would help in boosting output growth, consumption and investment expenditure play a very major role. And hence, we saw the massive improvement in the economy to the extent that, as like, like I said, during the third quarter of 2020, we saw GDP growth at 5%, and we're hoping that, um, yes, even though we may not be able, as a result of the base effects, to achieve 5%, but we believe that the Nigerian economy will grow on the average for 2021 by close to about 2.9%, and that is our own estimate. So a couple of things, a lot of things have been done, and we are happy that we are seeing the results of, of these interventions. Now, I'll just go straight to what is the economic outlook for Nigeria? Yes, Nigeria's GDP is projected to grow, like I said earlier, by about 2.86% in 2021, the IMF and the World Bank also project real growth rate of 2.6% and 2.4% for 2021. The Nigerian fiscal authorities, the government, such as the Minister of Finance and National Planning Authority also project a GDP growth of about 3%. And the positive outlook is due to the high oil price, which today is above $80 per barrel, the implementation of the Economic Sustainability Plan, which was put in place during the period of the con con pandemic, and a rebound in our manufacturing activities and economic activities in Nigeria. We also have seen that confidence in Nigerian business environment is growing due to sustained policy interventions in our economy. And overall, business confidence index is projected, which is projected at 37.7 index points in November 2021, we believe will rise to as high as 57.6 index points by the middle of 2022. Inflation so far has moderated downwards, like I said, it had peaked during the period of the pandemic to as high as 18.17%. Today, it's about 16.6. We are hoping that we should be, it should be able to moderate to about 15.35% by December 2021 and further down to about 14.91% by February 2022. Reserves has gone up. As we speak today, reserves are, is over 41. And we're also hoping that as we see uh, further rebound in crude price, even though some of us are not, we, yes, we're happy that price is up, but we believe we are not going to let down our guards. We must continue to do what, is, what needed to be done to ensure that we truly diversify the, the base of the Nigerian economy from relying on oil into the non oil sectors of the economy. And I will speak to this uh, before I close. 
So reserve, we will continue to do everything possible to boost the reserve positions. So those of you in our foreign community, foreign, foreign investor community who look at reserves, I would say the reserves today look good. Um, for those of you who have businesses and are looking at possibility of repatriating your profits through dividends, we started a program where dividends are now being repatriated easily. So you should have, if as long as it's a properly documented foreign direct investment into the country, we are positive that you should be able and will give priority to you as you aim to repatriate your profits. Um, we will continue to do our give support to, um, um, to our companies through credit facilities. We will continue to encourage the banks. The central bank will continue to put pressure on our banking industry to see to uh, the fact that they embrace, uh, they continue to embrace a loan to deposit ratio. We'll do everything possible to encourage them to lend more money to the agricultural sectors because we believe agriculture holds key to the uh, growth and the diversification of our economy from extreme reliance on oil. Um, now, but the big issue is that what remains the focus? When President Muhammad Buhari came on board, it was a time when crude prices were coming down. And subsequent to that, we saw the recession in 2016 and 2017. We saw the crude price again at that time came down. We saw massive pressure on our reserves. We saw massive pressure on exchange rates. Unfortunately, at that time, exchange rates saw an adjustment from about 168 naira to the dollar when the president came on board in 2015 to where it is today, which is almost about 414, 415, and in some cases, as it moves up and down at about 411. But what the president had said and the mantra had been that what is it? Why should we be importing what we can produce in Nigeria? Why can we not? Why, why shouldn't we embrace a diversification of the economy to the extent that we produce what we eat and eat what we produce? So we started our program. And that is why we are encouraging the foreign investor community. Even before the president came on board in 2015, a couple of our textile industries, some of our manufacturing industries, due to certain challenges they faced in the economy, they closed down. We are now looking forward to making sure that, that we reposition and reopen these industries again. We are making granting of credit easy for these industries so that they can embrace, they can, they can attract cheap credit, long term credit. And I can say, I mean, a long time in the history of the financial system in Nigeria, manufacturing sectors can, can, can access credit at rates, single digit interest rates of no more than 9%. For a, for a long time in the history of our country, manufacturing, manufacturing sectors can also access credit, long-term credit of 10 years with two years moratorium and single-digit interest rates, which has never happened before. And I'm saying during this period of this president, a lot of things are happening, and we, this is an opportunity for us to say those things that are happening. This is an opportunity for us to make you know what you can take advantage of in the Nigerian economy that you do not really need to import foreign capital. But if you want to, we will invite, we invite you to import your foreign capital. But if you, would, if you do need to complement this with, with local Naira, it should be easy for you to access credit as single digit and for a tenure as long as 10 years with two years moratorium. So there is a strong need at this time for us to think of how we can deepen the agricultural sector in Nigeria, not just about the smallholder farmers where close to almost about 700 to 800 billion have been granted in smallholder and cobra program loans to almost about 3.5 million farmers cultivating almost about 4 million hectares of land over this period. And this has helped in helping us to uh, improve our level of food security in the country. The Central Bank of Nigeria had, through these interventions, uh, gone into supporting the agricultural program for at least close to about 21 agricultural products, particularly in this case rice, sorghum, cassava, and output and productivity and yield is improving. And at this stage, we are saying 
now that we are seeing improvement in yield, now that we are seeing improvement in agricultural output in Nigeria, we'll seek opportunity for foreign investors to come in and look at how we can process this food, look at just some of the logistical problems that can be solved by in moving food from farm to market for the good of Nigeria and also Nigerians. We are looking at giving a lot of support, even looking at our oil and gas industry. Nigeria has for a long time been flaring gas. We are saying it is time that Nigeria begins to produce, and not to just produce gas for export, but produce gas for local consumption. We are looking at the possibility of even converting this gas to, poly, to petrochemicals, like you know, petrochemicals where the output is polyethylene and polypropylene are the base materials for a plastic industry. And we seek that with the God-given talent or gift of oil and gas, we should begin to produce polypropylene, polyethylene in our country so we can also rely less on importing these products. Luckily, we are doing a lot of work trying to encourage our Nigerian companies and we're happy that Nigerian companies are really taking the lead because we're saying we as Nigerians must help our country. We must live up to expectation by saying, by stepping forward to develop our country. We are doing that and that is why I never seize the opportunity in commending some of our Nigerian industrialists like Aliko Dangote, Abdul Samad Rabiu, um, Aliko Dangote, like you all know, is currently building, has invested close to about $17.5 billion in an oil refinery, in a fertilizer, and also in a petrochemical industry. I hear Abdul Samad is also going into the same He whereas Aliko will be producing 650,000 barrels per day refinery, Boa is thinking of going to about 300,000 barrels per day refinery. What will this do to the country? It will help in conserving our foreign exchange. What we were spending money on importing petroleum products, we will not conserve that foreign exchange for other things. We will save the cost of logistics and transportation, and we believe that through this initiative, price of even petroleum products in Nigeria can be more competitive and more affordable by our people, and we can begin to see to how we can truly, truly begin to talk about exiting subsidy, a subsidy regime for petroleum products uh, in Nigeria. These are some of the things we're doing. And we do want to continue to say that Nigeria being the largest economy in Africa, Nigeria being a country with the largest population in Africa, indeed being projected to the third, to the country that will have the third largest population in the world by the year 2050 with 450 million population. If you do think about investing in Africa, and we know and today, people are talking about what are the next frontiers for development and opportunities in the world. Africa holds the best frontiers for development in the world today. Your yield from investments can be the, is today the highest in Africa. And I would say this, and please pardon me if I say so. People are saying Nigerians should take the lead. And truly, yes, Nigerians should take the lead. But I'm saying to you, the foreign investor, if you think about Africa being the next frontier for opportunities and development in Africa, you do not have a choice. You will have to look at Nigeria. Because Nigeria has the largest market. In Nigeria, you will produce. And Nigeria is trying to reposition itself through these opportunities to say that not only that we want to produce for our people, we need to be able to not just, not just embrace import substitution industrialization, but also export-oriented industrialization, where we'll be producing not just for Nigeria, where the manufacturing agricultural sectors will be back up again, but we'll be producing not just for Africa, so as to position Nigeria truly as a leader under the Af continental African, uh, African continental trade, free trade agreement. And I want to say, and join Mr. President, in saying Nigeria is truly open. Please come over. We are setting examples as Nigerians to say we want to invest in our country. And we, be, we believe by the time you see the steps that we have taken, it is also easy for you to come join us in the race to develop Nigeria and by extension the African continent. I thank you for your attention.
Hello. We want to thank the governor of the central bank for giving us that clear roadmap. All right, we've just heard from the governor of the central bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emiafile, um, speaking about the investment opportunities that lie with Nigeria. Remember, the federal government is organizing this Nigeria International Partnership Forum in Paris, France.